Morning San Antonio starts right now. Friday, we made it to the end of the week. Good morning to you. It is October 15th, and if you're just now kind of tuning in, we've been tracking some fog this morning, but we're waiting on a pretty powerful cold front. Yes, we're very excited about that. And, and of course, excited because it's Friday and we're talking about some San Antonio stores here. Yeah, San Antonio store has made Yelp's national top 10 list of Latinx owned businesses to watch. All right, so we probably know this one maybe from watching SA Live. Felice Modern is one of two of those businesses in Texas that were selected. Uh, that's right. The San Antonio store owned by Mario and Ginger Diaz, who wanted to create a space for colorful, local and global art, gifts and home decor with San Antonio flavor. And so for those of you who are not familiar with Police Modern, it's located the main store at 110 West Almost Drive. Uh, and that is not not too far from McCullough, but they are also in uh, the Pearl. There's a pop-up shop in there as well across from local coffee. So the shop was selected based on what they're calling national presence, average rating, and review counts according to officials from Yelp. And so it says that Yelp announced the Latinx owned business attribute in 2020 as a way for Latin owned businesses to identify themselves on the platform. A lot of people are going to be wondering about this one and to share it and see more about the article and this local business that made this Yelp list, go to our website at ksat.com. But yeah, congrats. For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Former President Bill Clinton is in the hospital this morning. He's being treated in the ICU for a blood infection, also known as sepsis. They say his diagnosis is not related to COVID and is not related to his history of heart disease. An FDA advisory panel has voted unanimously to recommend Moderna's booster shot be given six months after the second dose. The same panel will take up Johnson & Johnson's booster today. We'll also discuss the effectiveness of mixing vaccines. A federal appeals court is once again allowing Texas to continue banning most abortions. This decision keeps the law in place as the Justice Department tries to halt the law. It allows private citizens to collect at least $10,000 in damages if they bring a successful lawsuit against an abortion provider who violates the restrictions. A bill that restricts how transgender students participate in school sports in Texas is heading to the Senate. It cleared the Texas House during a special session yesterday. If it becomes law, public school student athletes born male will only be allowed to play on boys sports teams. Athletes born female will only be allowed to play on girls teams unless an all girls team does not exist. The U.S. has officially rejoined the United Nations Human Rights Council. The U.S. withdrew under President Donald Trump three years ago. The U.S. plans to focus efforts on Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, among others. Millions of families are getting their fourth enhanced child tax credit payment today. The coronavirus relief package in March is making the credit fully refundable, triggering those payments. Researchers think the first two payments lifted more than three million American kids out of poverty. The three largest package delivery services announced their holiday shipping deadlines for UPS, three-day select delivery, and FedEx three-day freight arriving by December 24th need to be shipped by the 21st. For postal service retail ground delivery arriving before December 25th, you should ship out by December 15th. United Airlines has unveiled plans to add five new international destinations in time for next summer's travel season. Among the new destinations are Amman, Jordan, Mallorca, Spain, and the Canary Islands. Google is changing the way we search on our cell phones. The update allows the page to automatically load the next set of results without having to click the See More button. The gradual rollout of the feature is already underway. And that's today's Night at Nine. All right, we are on Cold Front Watch 2021. Yes, I'm so excited about this. Maybe Friday football will be comfortable, maybe chilly. Uh, it could be a little bit, uh, bit chilly, also windy, so that's something we're going to have to contend Can with. Can you match up being a field goal kicker tonight, Justin? <laughs> you, you have to be uh, pretty accurate tonight, I, especially depending on which way you're facing, because we're going to get a good northerly wind, gusting probably to about 30 miles per hour at some point, I think, once this front comes through. So here are the details. We'll start off this morning foggy, pretty humid. I think we reach our peak at about 2 p.m. 85 degrees, couple thunderstorms mixed in as that front comes through and then turning windy and cooler tonight. 66 degrees by 8 p.m. But it's you know going to feel a little bit chillier when uh, you have those northerly winds really getting gusty. Temperature wise, 
78 right now, Pleasanton, 75 Gonzalez, 73 in Boulevard, 72 Comfort. A lot of 70s out there, and again, there is some fog to deal with. Most of that has cleared out of San Antonio, but as you get down towards Uvalde and Catua, still some fog hanging on. That should lift within the hour. Pollen count is in. Molds have dropped, but they're still high, 3,660. So heads up there, molds are going to be the major issue today. And looking at the forecast, 20% chance rain with that front, 79 by 3 o'clock once the front moves through. So temperatures are already starting to drop a little bit. And then 76 by 5 o'clock and down into the 60s, as we mentioned, by the 8 o'clock hour. Weekend looks pretty good. We're going to get some chilly temperatures, especially Sunday morning. We'll take a look at that. Plus, we still have some flood warnings for some of the rivers and creeks. We'll pass those along to you coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you. Top stories we're following for you right now. Officials are making another attempt this morning to recover the body of that woman whose car was swept away in high water during yesterday morning's storms. This is happening in East Bear County off North Greytown Road near FM at 1518 near St. Hedwig. The woman is one of two people who are said to have died in the floodwaters yesterday afternoon and firefighters recovered the body of a five year old girl from a different car that also got swept away. The crews have been using boats, dive equipment, dogs, helicopters and drones in these recovery efforts. Well, other headlines this morning, more possible problems for former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. This as the San Antonio man steps forward to say he too was a victim of a shakedown. This September 2018 picture of Charles Ibarra seen sitting on a cooler, smiling while surrounded by loved ones, should have represented the proud culmination of lots of planning in nearly $600 paid to host a family reunion at Bear County's Rodriguez Park. Reserve the pavilion, they, they tell you that you know you need security. Financial records show Ibarra arranged to rent the space through the Bear Heritage and Parks Department and then had to cover a separate $320 security fee paid at the Precinct 2 Constable's office. But the day of the event, around 11 a.m., as Ibarra's family prepared food and the crowd had grown to only a few dozen people, Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela and Chief Deputy Anthony Castillo showed up in full uniform. The constable quickly began yelling out instructions. Turn off the lights, the electricity and the water and to turn off the music. The problem? She wanted an additional $400 for security in cash, according to Ibarra, who said he stood there stunned while some family members began to wonder what the issue was. At this point, you had already paid for security. That's correct. At her office? At her office, yes. I went the day before the event to pay him. Did it feel like a shakedown? Yes. She was like, shut me down. She goes, you don't want to pay me? You don't have it? I, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. So she says, the Lord shut you down. And with her public corruption trial getting closer, this new information couldn't have come at a worse time for the former constable. Dylan Collier is here live in the studio with more on the latest allegation he has uncovered. Dylan, good morning. I guess the first question is, what did the Ibarra family do in this situation? Well, Mr. Ibarra paid her the $400. Uh, he had to do it in a piecemeal style. He was able to collect small amounts of money from family members that were at the family reunion. He had to charge some of these family members twice for T-shirts that were part of the occasion. So he was eventually able to get her this extra security money and allow the reunion to take place and end late that evening. But uh, obviously something that he didn't anticipate. This was never told to him beforehand. Uh, he then attempted to file a report with her office after the reunion took place. Uh, she obviously would not take that report, never produced any sort of record of this $400. So he was forced to go to the Bear Heritage Foundation and file a complaint with them, which led to a $5,000 settlement. And you guys have found out that there were similar allegations regarding her behavior toward the public at Rodriguez Park before? Yeah, well, the, the quote, Easter shakedown of 2019 was a huge part of that Texas Rangers warrant that was used to raid her offices on Gilbo in the fall of 2019. Uh, she was later indicted for two criminal charges related to payment logs at Rodriguez Park, that uh, Easter incident where another family had rented a pavilion. She showed up in uniform, said that it was her pavilion to use that day, and then, uh, according to court records, forced that family to pay her $300 in that case in order to continue using the pavilion. That is a key part of her upcoming criminal trial, uh, which is right now scheduled for early December. Dylan, it's my understanding the Bear County District Attorney is not going to criminally 
formally charge her for these alleged shakedowns. Is that right? Yeah, they have called uh, Ibotta's incident for sure, they've called a civil matter. Uh, and then going back to those two charges of tampering with government records, the DA has told us in a statement that these are charges that don't require them to have a complainant, a, a victim, so to speak. So because of that, they're going after her for the two felony tampering with records charges and not charging her specifically for these quote unquote shakedowns at Rodriguez Park. And it kind of goes to what we've heard from other attorneys that we've spoken to over the last year and a half or so after Barrientes Vela and her captain were indicted. And the criticism is that she has been uh, gravely undercharged, that they could have charged her with far more offenses. Uh, this arguably this incident is official oppression, even theft. These are charges that she will not face. So because of that, there is a narrow path for her to beat all of these criminal charges against her. And that's been a criticism that's been lodged against the DA for quite some time now. As of today, when is her trial scheduled to begin? She is tentatively scheduled to go to trial December 6th. There was a motion filed earlier this week to have DA Joe Gonzalez removed from the case. A uh, visiting judge will have to rule on that motion. And based on how that ruling goes, it's either December 6th or going to be pushed into 2022. Uh, my guess is that they begin her trial sometime late this year. All right, Dylan Collier, thank you for keeping yep. us updated. Thank you, yep. Dylan. Have a good weekend. 909 right now, about 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. What are our bodies made of? Very cool things, but also some icky things like microbes, which include viruses and fungi, and that includes uh, stinky feet. Did you know that some of the bacteria that causes the stinky feet is actually used to ripen Limburger cheese. A little gross, but hey, you can learn a lot at the Witty. They're debuting a new exhibit tomorrow. So stick around just ahead on GMSA at nine. We'll give you a little sneak peek. 913, welcome back on a Friday morning. There is always something new at the Witty Museum here in San Antonio. This weekend, they're debuting one of their longest running exhibits, The Secret World Inside You. The exhibit is all about the bacteria, viruses, and other microbes living inside you. Alicia Badetta is live with more on the cool interactive lessons you and your kids can participate in. Hey, good morning, you guys. Cool, stinky, but very interesting nonetheless. So you can, it's so interactive. Look at this game. You can actually find out, learn more about what foods make your gut happy or sad. So let's see, avocado, I'm guessing, is gonna make you happy. You can launch it over here and it'll tell you that he's happy. So that is, you can build your microbiome and learn more about what makes your gut happy. But let's go over here to the birth canal to learn more about what happens inside a woman's body and especially those microbes. With me, Director of Communications for the Witty, Samantha Rendon. What's so cool about this part? Um, so before we are born, when we are in uterine, we are in a completely sterile place. It is when we finally um, are able, when our mothers birth us, um, if it is a natural birth, that is the first time that we actually pick up bacteria, you know, all called human microbiome. And it's what makes us, us. Um, so with that, this, you know, the secret world inside you presented by University Health deals with the trillions and trillions of microbiome that live in it, on us and in us and, you know, help make us, us. Just like this immune system over here. So they're going to have these larger than life. Uh, they're going to have these larger than life displays of what's inside us, what makes up our body. So it's really cool to know. Um, I showed you all earlier the stinky feet exhibit, and now we're moving on to the mouth. So hundreds of microbial species living inside our mouth. I think we know that, right? So Samantha, it kicks off tomorrow morning. And then until when do people have to come explore what's living inside them? Yes, yeah, so this premieres tomorrow on October 16th, and this will be here at the Whitney Museum till April 10th of 2022. But every Saturday, we're gonna have Saturdays with the scientists. We're gonna have programming in our labs. Um, it's just gonna be a really fun exhibit, but very educational, and especially through the times of the yeah. pandemic. But great time to learn more about us. Samantha, thank you so much for being with us today. So again, families at home, you have, you can start tomorrow in your journey and learning more about what's living inside us. Reporting live from the Witty, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Alicia. 
Well, Justin is here with a look at your weekend forecast. He has an update on the pollen count. And this week's storms, Justin, I think you'll agree in retrospect, are, yeah. have been every bit of the flood event we anticipated, if not more. Uh, unfortunately so. We did get a lot of heavy rain. The, the numbers were pretty impressive. And all that water still has to drain. So mm -hmm. some of our creeks and rivers are still swollen. And we got to keep that in mind. I want to show you a map here that shows you where some of the, uh, the, the issues that we're having, where some of those creeks are high looking at minor, moderate, or major flooding. So as you get out towards Cibolo Creek there at Sutherland Springs, it looks like we've peaked here, but that water's all gonna go downstream. Same story around the Guadalupe River at Gonzales. And then the highest spot we saw there was Sandy's Creek near Westhoff, where the water is really, really uh, still pretty high. So again, all this has to drain south and east towards the Gulf of Mexico. If you're in some of these southeastern counties, keep an eye on those creeks and rivers here over the next 24 hours at least. Uh, before we can get all that water out of here and things were clear. We're also watching a cold front. That's the exciting news today, right? The, the front has made it into parts of central Texas, central and north Texas, and we can see that with the dew points. They're much, much lower behind this front. 30s and 40s, that dry air will punch in here a little bit later today, but out ahead of it, still very humid, and that's one of the reasons we saw some of that fog this morning. It was uh, pretty thick in spots. Temperature-wise, out ahead of the front, we've got some 70s, and then you got 40s and 50s there behind it. Uh, freeze watches are in effect across parts of the panhandle. Just to give you an idea of how cold this air is, temperatures will get near freezing in places like Amarillo, or at least close to it around Lubbock as well. There's the scene outside, still some hazy conditions. Not a whole lot of fog here in San Antonio. 77 degrees, the airport is reporting a little bit of maybe light drizzle. Calm winds, dew point is at 74. And the 70s for most of us this morning, 73 Comfort, 72 Bandera, 75 in Divine. Here at 76 in Del Rio, 73 right now in Carrizo Springs. Invisibility starting to improve. We're seeing a few places still around two and a half miles there in New Braunfels, E Valley, Carrizo Springs, also still seeing some fog at this hour. Here's our forecast. Here comes the front, should be here by about two, three o'clock. Along the front, there could be some thunderstorms. We do have to watch out for that. Not looking for severe weather, not looking for flooding. These will be quick moving showers and storms, but there could be a few that pop up. And then that pushes south by six o'clock, and I think we'll start to clear here in San Antonio and then cool down quite a bit as we get into tonight. Forecast calls for uh, temperatures to be in the mid 80s. I think around two o'clock, that's probably when we see our high temperature. And then by three o'clock, temperatures start to fall off behind that front. 20% chance of rain with the front. And then we fall into the 70s and eventually 60s with windy conditions. How windy, you ask? Some gusts up to around 30 miles per hour, maybe even 35 in a few cases as we get into tonight and even into tomorrow. I think Saturday is going to be a, a breezy, if not windy day. Extended forecast. We'll go 75 tomorrow, 73 on Sunday with a morning low of 48 with some cloud cover around on Sunday. It's not going to get all that warm. 82 Monday, 82 Tuesday, 84 Wednesday, and maybe some more rain chances showing up by Thursday of next week. Guys. Right, so if the Halloween inflatables are gone tomorrow morning, You'll know why. You'll, yeah. You, you yeah. know exactly why. Yeah, we're bringing ours inside. <laughs> Good plan. Yes. Yeah. Right now, 919, about 77 degrees. And coming up after the break, David Sears will be joining us with this morning's headlines, including this rare albino wallaby. Welcome back in your morning headlines. A small plane crash in California. Not much left of the plane, but all those on board survived. And China sends a rocket to space. Plus, a rare birth at a Kansas Zoo and snake bit. Literally, David Sears is here. Good morning. Hey. Got the Indiana Jones heebie-jeebies? Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you. Why did it have to be snakes? Wait till you see this. Okay. Wait till you hear this guy's story. Hey, when you look at this video, though, you might find it hard to believe. All four people on this single engine plane are alive. That's a wing right there. And that, you can barely see it, but that's the prop of that plane. Not a lot left. Happened just outside of Sacramento. A bystander said he heard a loud noise, looked up and saw the plane crash through the front yard of a house. And then it burst into flames. Another neighbor was able to get a fire extinguisher to the scene and help the victims. There was a pregnant woman, a man, and two teenagers on board. They are all in critical condition. And blast off. Nope, that is not another rich guy rocket blasting into space with an actor on board. It's a rich country's rocket blasting off into space. That is a Chinese rocket taking off with their first solar exploration satellite on board. It is now in orbit. The Chinese people helped named it Goddess of the Sun. The rocket also carried 10 smaller satellites with it. 
and things are hopping at the zoo in Manhattan, Kansas. We're not talking about bunnies, we're talking about wallabies. That is a rare albino wallaby. The staff at the zoo says mom actually gave birth to two wallabies. The other was usual brown and gray color. They named their albino wallaby Bruni after the island off Tasmania, Australia, where about 200 albino wallabies live. Staffer St. Joy was born back in December and just started to emerge from mama's pouch in September. And finally, creep out factor story of the day, unless you love snakes like Al. Yes, that is a rattler and that is connected to a large rattlesnake and that is a rattle wrangler Al Wolf. Al loves rattlesnakes and loves to wrangle them. He's been wrangling rattlers for 32 years. So when he got a call for a rattler under a house on a mountain, he was ready to wrangle. He figured he was going to need a snake glove or two, so he put on his gloves and boy, he was right. But as soon as he got under the house, oh, oh, there was not one, not two or three. Oh, there's a lot of snakes under the house. So I get on my hands and knees. And I'm not even in there a minute before I find the first rattlesnake. A total of 92 rattlesnakes underneath her house. I was tickled pink. I wish that happened every day to me. <laughs> 92 <laughs> rattlesnakes and he was tickled pink. Oh no. Oh my, that's the guy who loves his job. By the way, those snakes will be set free in a rural part of the county out there in California. And yes, Al has been bitten by a rattlesnake. Not once, not twice, not three times. 13 times. What? How a guy is standing upright and walking wow. around after getting bit 13 times uh, by rattlers beyond me. Lucky number 13, I guess. I guess. Yes, so. Wow, the guy's very casual about using kitchen tongs to handle those rattlers. Can you imagine 92 rattlesnakes mm. under your house? Uh, I wouldn't be oh, tickled pink. <laughs> no. So he got an adrenaline rush for a different, in a different way. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. so. But he loves it. He's been doing yes, it for like over 30 years. So, okay. Thank God for Al, because he can come get them. That's yes, he can. True. Always got to have somebody come get those yes, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you, David. 926, about 77 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. A look ahead to another busy weekend in sports. We're going to break down everything from high school football to the Cowboys. And coming up next, Jesse DeGoyada joins us here live to talk about three amazing women she's been getting to know as part of our Hispanic Heritage Celebrations. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide, looking at I-10 and Wurzbach Road, things looking okay over there. And there's a look at Loop 410 and Austin Highway. Things are moving there as well. Just about 9.30 on your Friday. Welcome back. All month long, we've been covering stories celebrating Hispanic heritage across the Alamo City. And today we have in studio our Jesse Dogoyalo to talk about the stories she's been covering, honoring three amazing women. Good morning. Jesse Dogoyalo, how morning. are you? Fine. It's, Happy to be here. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Good to have you. Wonderful to see you. And thank you for joining us. So first of all, I want to ask you, what did you hope to show our viewers through your Hispanic heritage profiles? And as you know, Stephanie, uh, a lot has changed, certainly since in my lifetime, for, for Mexican-Americans. But one thing that hasn't changed, and that's their devotion to la familia, family. And so I wanted to focus on women and find out, so who inspired you? For instance, there we have Graciela Sanchez. So she has a Esperanza Peace and Justice Center. So her roots go back, uh, way back to the West Side. And uh, that's her grandmother right there, I believe, and her mother. And um, her grandmother was actually one of the, her great grandmother, I think, was one of the chili queens. And then her grandmother was also very active. And her mother was very active in terms of fighting for the rights of, of the people of the, uh, of the West Side. And so she was always a fighter and wanting to, again, try to further their, uh, their lives, certainly from what from where they are. Jess, what about Rebecca Flores, the first state director of the United Farm Workers? Well, she is a woman who I've known for many years, mm -hmm. like Graciela. And Rebecca uh, was one of the leaders of the United Farm Workers in the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, she became the state director. And so I wanted to find out about her family. And it was because her father certainly uh, had been a, a, a farmer uh, in Atascosa County. But then, of course, they later went out following the migrant path. And so she remembers very vividly, you know, what it was like to be a migrant worker back then. And sadly, not much had improved when she became the leader of the United Farm Workers. Obviously, that's why Cesar Chavez wanted to, again, form the UFW. And so she championed their situations, hoping for 
working, struggling for higher wages, better working conditions, safer working conditions for many of those workers. And so she has an amazing, amazing story. And again, it was because of her life's experiences and her family, just like Graciela. Very close, and I'm seeing they're carrying, they carry the torch as well. Um, and then coming up tonight at six, tell us how you had to take a different approach with the story. Interesting about this one, because although this is Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, the person I'm, I'm profiling this evening isn't Hispanic, but I say that many believe she's Hispanic at heart. And that is the one and only Dr. Teresa Von Hoy, a professor of history at St. Mary's University. Uh, she has become really uh, one of uh, the experts uh, regarding Mexican-American culture and history and issues. And so for her, her inspiration came, believe it or not, she was, as she, her words, I was the biggest hillbilly you ever met. She <laughs> said she, was, she grew up in North Carolina, uh, but her father led the desegregation of their little town, of their town back then. And as a result of him leading the desegregation, because he was the only history teacher in the only high school, they, ta they tapped him to lead the desegregation. But as a result, they suffered a lot of backlash. And, uh, you know, she even recalls being beaten up waiting for a school bus oh early, God. early one morning. And so for her, you know, equality runs very, very deep, mm -hmm. you know, and so for her, it's personal. So she talks about that. Je cool. Jess, since we've got you here, I, I was going to ask you, in covering these stories, have you had any aha moments? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the biggest aha moment is just what I've described, how our families, how our families influence who we are and the path that we take in life. And uh, certainly for me, it was my grandfather. I never knew the man, but I, I really love the story that my mother told about her, him being an editor of a newspaper in Monterrey. And I remember when I told her, Mom, I'm going to be a reporter. And she said, I mean, that you're going to starve. Because <laughs> <laughs> she knew. <laughs> because it was very tough back then. Wow. And so, yes. Oh, wow. But see, I mean, when you look back at your own family history, all of us, sure, you see elements of their lives that have impacted ours. There are some common threads there, yes. in a way. Isn't that yeah. amazing? How yeah. interesting. You know, and how it, it evolves. And just last week, it was the executive director of the Mexican-American Civil Rights Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, for her, uh, her grandmother was one of the leaders of LULAC in the 1950s. Her other grandmother was the wife of an Arkansas farmer, but, he, but she admired the ideals of, Cesar, of uh, certainly Martin Luther King. And so she, again, held that and went on to follow that path. You bet. Which is why she you know, kind of kept it in her back pocket, definitely, exactly. and has this all behind her. Well, that was, that was also a lovely talk with her as well. Thank you. Well, tonight's story airs at 6. You can find all the Hispanic heritage stories on our website at ksat.com. Thank you for joining us, Jesse. Well, thank good you. Good to see you. Good thank seeing you. you, and I hope you have a good weekend. Thank you. You as well. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Let's go outside with live cam on a Friday morning. It's 77. Very, very humid. Very foggy in some places. Waiting on that cold front. And this isn't just a little wimpy front. This is a... Hefty. It's our first fall front, and I think everyone's looking at their watch and their clock saying, man, when, when's, when's it going to get here? We're, we're ready for it. And I didn't have ch a chance to alter this graphic because Mark mentioned earlier, if you're going to be kicking field goals tonight in those high school football games, it ain't going to go straight through the uprights because that wind's going to be blowing things all around. Northerly winds 15 to 25 miles per hour in some cases, some gusts up to 30. So heads up there. If you're heading out to those football games where you have plans outdoors tonight, know that around 7 o'clock or so when the sun goes down, temperatures are really going to start to fall. 70 at kickoff, 66 by halftime. Those gusty north winds. Sunset is around 7.03. Temperatures right now are still warm. 76 in New Braunfels, 74 in Boulevardy, 76 in Hondo, 75 in Divine. A lot of cloud cover, a lot of fog out there at the moment. Fog is trying to lift here around San Antonio, but we're still seeing some of that around Uvalde and Carrizo Springs where visibility is down about a mile and a half. Forecast for today, 82 noon time, 2 o'clock, 2 to 3 is when I expect that front comes through. So there's a 20% chance of rain as it does. We peak at about 85 right after lunch and then temperatures fall from there behind the front. Windy conditions and those windy conditions hang around into tomorrow. We'll have much more on this front, what it means for your weekend and what uh, next week uh, holds for us as well. That forecast is coming up here in just a bit, guys. Justin.
10 is hard to believe, but it is week eight of the high school football season. That went quick. David and RJ back to look ahead this week's big games and also talk college football and the Cowboys. And guys, I got to say right out of the gate for a hot minute this morning, I almost thought about driving over to Houston and watching game <laughs> one between the Strohs and those Ooh. Boston Red Sox. That'd be yeah. good tonight, won't it? Yeah, yeah. that too. And Amongst then, uh, everything else going on. Yeah, yeah. Spurs are also taking the court, but uh, we are obviously still yeah, in the mix of football. Season, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're still in the middle. Uh, wait, <laughs> you said, Justin? The wind's coming out of the north. Yep. <laughs> so if you're in a stadium that goes east west, then you got to worry about the wind. If your stadium goes north south, you either get a big much. help or you're just going to like <laughs> float it up right into the See, breeze. it depends on whether or not you want to kick a field goal or punt. See, if you've uh -huh. got the wind behind you and you're punting, you're good. How yeah, about this? That's what I mean. So it depends on the wind. Yeah. 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 How about this? Oh. Score touchdowns. Just so run the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> score touchdowns, let's, everybody. Let's How that, simple so. will it be? All right, coach, you got your you got your marching orders. Just score some touchdowns. And <laughs> score some TDs. Uh, hey, we got some good games too yeah, coming up too. Let's be interesting here. Yeah, this is going to be fun. The uh, game of the week: Southwest Legacy versus Southwest High School. The Dragons taking on the Titans. David, this is called the Fire and Armor Bowl. How cool yeah, is, is that? This is good stuff down there at Southwest. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been that, hadn't been down there in a while. The and Dragons since maybe the yeah. Detmer days yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah that's going to so. be a fun scene out there tonight. And they're both uh, they're both in the hunt. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so that's good. Steel and Clemens Clemens is still in the hunt. Steel is of course one of the dominant teams in the city. So that'll be a good game tonight because you know they're still even if you're like got a one and two record, mm -hmm. you, you're still in the playoff hunt right now. Yeah, so, we're you know, in you the thick of this right here. Yeah, so. this game uh, called the Battle of Three Double O Nine. Being the street that runs through the two schools. And Steel cool is stuff. like 6 and <laughs> yeah. 0. Yeah, big, big ri uh, neighborhood rivalry matchup there. And I was wrong. Clemens is 2 and 1 mm -hmm. two in and district. One. So okay. don't, don't send them to him. <laughs> <laughs> don't write, don't call, don't email. <laughs> this is 2 and 1. Um, a couple other ones here, including that same district, Smithson Valley. The yeah. Rangers are still unbeaten. So looking to maybe uh, play Steel, assuming that Steel maybe wins tonight. I don't know. We'll see. They play the Bobcats, South Sand, and then Highlands versus Lanier. This is a big matchup See, in SAISD. This is one of those districts where you can be like 0 and 1, like right. Highlands is. Mm -hmm. And you can still have a chance at, uh, at getting in the playoffs. So these these are pretty big games coming down the stretch. These last three or four games. That game there at the Rock Pile, and then we got the Rock Somerset, Pile. the Love Bulldogs that. taking on oh I, I, the Bulldog matchup here. Lavernia yeah. Bulldogs, Somerset Bulldogs. Which Bulldog Who's is, be the top is, Bulldog. is more of a Bulldog. I think Larry Ramirez was was down at Lavernia visiting the other day. And so he's got uh, he's on the road to to Lavernia tonight. So that's where he's going to yeah, be. Yeah, and I think Lavernia is the Bears. Actually, my bad. Not yeah. the Bulldogs. See, oh, the Bears versus go. Bulldog matchup. Bears and Bulldogs. <laughs> and then we have uh, Alamo back. Heights. Uh, we were there last week. Those are, we know those is are a the really mules. good team. Yeah, we know those are the Mules taking on Medina Valley. And uh, Alamo Heights are really really good team, as we saw Man. in person. Last they week. played less. They played last week against Floresville, and it was like, ooh. Yeah. My. Good times out there. All right, let's get to college football. I know Justin's thinking that uh, we're all, oh, sorry, Justin. Hold on. We got to talk Texas first. I, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I know you that's guys okay. beat Alabama last week, and <laughs> that's all we should talk about is AM, but we got to talk about UT. And no, that's way. okay. Talk about AM. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. Let's move on. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's going to be rough because they lost uh, two more of their, of their big time players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Against yeah. Oklahoma, one of them, uh, Whittington, their receiver, uh, he may be out for the rest of the year. Yeah. So that's uh, that's not yeah. good against uh, Oklahoma State, one of the top teams mm -hmm. in the conference, and one of the top teams in the country. Uh, yeah, they are. Oklahoma State is ranked 12th right now, but this game is in Austin, so hopefully the home crowd kind of helps the Horns get past this uh, tough loss from last week against Oklahoma, and uh, that game is on at 11 a.m. I think yes. this is the game Arch Manning's going to be in Austin oh, for. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, here as go. Steve Sarkeesian does his uh, full court press recruiting there for UT. And here and here we go with all that. So, <laughs> yeah. I, and you know, Texas is one of the teams that all these reports keep coming out and saying Texas is on his list. It's like one of the top two teams mm -hmm. that he is considering, but he hasn't gone to everybody in the Southeastern Conference yeah. yet. I'm yeah. not sure uncles are going to let him yeah. go, well, to, go yeah. to UT. Word on the street was he, Eli, huh? he was yeah. down to UT and maybe Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, there's a connection with Kirby side. Smart, family connection with Kirby <laughs> Smart over there in Georgia. Yeah. So, well, so we'll, can, we'll we see. didn't go to the OE. Speaking of Southeastern Conference, uh, AM, they are on the road at Missouri looking to continue for the momentum after that big win. And think, Justin, here at home, give me more than what Justin. you gave me last week. It's a W. <laughs> and, and you know, in the Southeast Conference, they call it, they call it Missouri. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There. So, uh, <laughs> UTSA playing at home against Rice. They'll go 7 0. Uh, Justin, you have a prediction? Uh, what, for the Aggies? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, I mean, it's, a, it's a W, right? 
Okay. After Alabama, we, no now. let down. No let Better down. than last week. Last week it was just keep it within 30. <laughs> Very confident now. No, that was good. Uh, and oh, by the way, Frank Harris, award winner for this yeah, week for Frank UTSA Harris. Roadrunners. Good things there. So, so he's uh, he's on a roll, man. UTSA is on a roll. Yeah. Cowboys are on a roll. They're going to New England to face the Patriots, mm -hmm. which is this is going to be kind of weird. Yeah, this game interesting yeah. here, taking on Bill Belichick. He always has some stuff up his sleeve there, but the Cowboys playing pretty well there. Look at Zeke uh, looking to turn out some yeah. more yards. This game is the afternoon game, 325 Sunday. And because the Texans are still in the NFL, they're playing this week. <laughs> Who are they playing? The Colts. The Colts I looked yeah. it up right now. Who are they playing? David. All right, thank you guys. 942, <laughs> about 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up after the break, our KSET Kids segment, Kids Want to Know, and today is all about space. Space. Why did they call people human computers mm -hmm. if computers didn't exist? Because um, the notion of computation existed. So when you were doing mathematical equations, even if you did them with pencil and paper, that was considered computation. And so um, it was computation by people before it was computation by machines. How were you inspired? I was inspired by some of the professors that I had in college. They were the first people that I met that wrote books. And um, when I started interacting with people with writing books, it made me realize that I could possibly do it too. Now, student-led, kid-certified learning. Yay! Cool. That's the KSAC Kid segment. Kids want to know. I love that. Were people called human computers before computers? I love that. That's cute. Well, I like the little yay at the end. Yay. Yay. <laughs> that made me laugh. All right. So we're back to Justin now talking yeah. week, week in forecast. And before we get to the cold front, see you yeah. want to update us on maybe how that rainfall has trickle, trick, uh, trickled down into the aquifer? Yeah. The, the aquifer is still going up. And okay. we, we thought that we'd get a pretty good boost from those rains. I mean, obviously, they were plentiful. So the, the latest with the aquifer, for it's a 663.8, so we've jumped up above that magical number of 660. But keep in mind, the 10 day average is still 659.9. This does not mean we're going to come out of stage one restrictions. They're probably going to wait and watch and kind of see where the forecast goes here before we do that. But really, there's no need to water the yards right now, anyway, right? Because uh, we got such good rain, it was fairly widespread over the last couple of days. Here is what we're watching. This is what we're all excited about. Cold front. It is moving through Texas at this hour. It's made it through San Angelo, Abilene, Lubbock and Amarillo in the 40s right now. And this will continue to work its way towards our area as we get into the afternoon. You can very clearly see it with the dew points. Very dry behind it. Very humid out ahead of it. All that humidity is leading to some fog this morning and uh, that it continues in spots at this hour. Cloud cover, there's quite a bit of it out ahead of the front, but once the front comes through, we'll clear out. We're going to see some sun this afternoon. And as we zoom in a little closer here, some clouds trying to bubble up there in Valverde County. It looks like we've got a couple of light showers, and that is right along the front. So that uh, tells us that, yes, we could get a couple of showers and storms once this front comes through today. And as we look outside, sun's trying to shine through, but we've got that fog still. 78 degrees at the airport, 80 cents and 77 at Kelly. 75 at Randolph and uh, 79 Castroville, 72 Bandera, 72 up there in Kerrville. Up around Dryden, temperatures have fallen off into the 60s. And you can see some of that cooler air is just on our doorstep. So if you're watching us from the Hill Country, the cooler air will be there this morning, but it holds off until the afternoon for places like San Antonio and Point South. I mentioned the fog visibility is doing a little bit better. We're seeing uh, starting, we're seeing it start to come up in Carrizo Springs in Uvalde, and I think fog will generally lift here within the hour or so. Here's what our future cast looks like. Front is into San Antonio by, I say, 2, 3 o'clock this afternoon. As it moves in, we're going to see some isolated showers and storms right along the front. These won't last long. They're not going to put down a ton of heavy rain, but a couple of uh, flashes of lightning, maybe some thunder are possible with this as it moves through. And then by 6 o'clock, we're dealing with the windy conditions. Things clear out. And with those winds, we could see some gusts up to 30, maybe even 35 miles per hour. 
By 2 o'clock, we're at 85, but by 5 o'clock, we're dropping off into the 70s and eventually 60s by 8 p.m. So if you're going to be outdoors tonight, you may want to grab the jacket. It's going to be one of those situations. And I mentioned the gusts. Gusts tonight up to 30. It will stay breezy into tomorrow. Extended forecast will go 75 Saturday, 73 Sunday. Lower humidity, 82 Monday, mostly sunny. We'll get some more clouds next week and maybe another rain chance creeping in by Thursday. But those temperatures look pretty good. 70s and 80s. We can deal with that. Yeah, I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. You got it. Time check about 10 till 77 degrees. We'll be right back. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering. And on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. The sweet smell of incense is a great way to guide a soul back to the world of the living. It's also believed the smoke will elevate your prayers to God, purify your loved one's soul, and ward off evil spirits. An ideal location is on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. If you can find it, use copal incense. Made from a tree sap, its sacred scent can be traced all the way back to the ceremonies of the Mayans. Tell your loved one how much you miss them by lighting some incense. And hopefully your abuelita won't judge you this time. And welcome back. It's 954. If you'd like to receive a pair of Spurs tickets for opening night next week, you might want to consider donating blood today. Folks at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center giving donors two tickets for the Spurs game coming up Wednesday the 20th. It's only for those who donate at the Donor Pavilion. That's it. I-10 West, First Park 10 Boulevard. Appointments are strongly encouraged. And you can make an appointment online or by calling the number on your screen. Justin. That cold front should be here by 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon. Out ahead of it, still pretty humid. Couple of showers along the front, quick moving showers. Then we clear out, turns windy tonight. Be prepared for some cooler weather this evening and this weekend. Okay, we've, so I'm, we've, we've already talked a little bit about some of the hot Halloween costumes yes. this year. I even predicted that Bob Ross was going to be big this year. Yeah, you're right. Well, it's a couple's costume now. Yeah. There's Number part one. of it right there. Yeah, Bob Ross cus couple's costume. One is Bob Ross, the other is the painting. Yeah, that's cute. That way, you know, people vote. You can have a couple take part. And actually, I saw somewhere that um, uh, girls were dressing up as Bob Ross, so that's cute too. Also, we have the inflatable dinosaurs, and then th there's another really good one right there. Yeah, the there's sumo pick me up wrestler at <laughs> number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty funny. And I like, actually, we just passed number four. I like number four a lot. That's the stick a, figure. Just a stick figure. Okay, so <laughs> the squirrel costume and the links to Amazon, uh, nuts included. Yes. Uh, but that squirrel looks scary. Kind of looks like a bad guy in a movie, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Like a bank robber. And then one of the last ones on here is a little piggy that little, went all the way little... to the inflatable pig costume. So it's not your normal pig costume. Yeah. It's one of those inflatable ones. So it's a giant. Actually, all giant of, head. all of them on the list are inflatable except for the Bob Ross one. Right. So we have an article to all of this on KSAT.com, and I think it has links to all of these. Yeah, I think it has links to almost all of these on Amazon. Don't be surprised if it's possible that one or two of these may be out of stock. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm just going to say, which one would you try? I guess. Uh, stick the stick, stick figure? figure. I like the stick figure the best. <laughs> I, I, like I want to be Bob Ross, but I definitely would need the wig. <laughs> yes, you would. Have a great weekend, guys.